Welcome to the Grill and Egg Door. You're listening to my mommy and daddy. And now our feature presentation. Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 40 of The Groomer Next Door. I'm your co-host, Chris Green. Sitting next to me is the birthday girl, Sarah. Hello. Well, let's all just take a moment. Oh, and is I also have the little wonder of, of our lives, Claire. Want to say hi? Hi. Want to come over to me? Mike's over here. Hi. There you go. Um, hey, before we Sit. get started, um, hey, come here, little Sit. one. So you start kindergarten in a couple days. How you, how excited are you? I'm very excited. Did you, did you meet your teacher? Yeah. Do you like your teacher? Yeah, it's the one name is Mrs. Brown. There you go. Mrs. 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 Brown. There you go. And um, you have a lot of kids in your class, which is a new thing for you. Yeah, I have 20 kids. Wow, that's a lot. Well, Claire, Claire is, is obviously distracted because there's a cat across the street. And well, she's nothing like her parents. Nope, nope, I don't want to see panels. And she's, Claire, hey, little one. <laughs> yep, she's just completely on her own. She's trying to call a kitty. All right, well, I want to actually start off with a happy birthday to Sarah. Thank you. So, this is your big day. Before we get started, let us play our, our music for you. And of course, I have to say it. Happy, happy birthday, sweetheart. Thank you. Well, let's start with Did you enjoy your day? Yes. Much, yeah. Much? <laughs> much. <laughs> I enjoyed it very much. Um, we got to see the turtles, as my ringtone suggests. And um, a little mixed feelings about that movie. <laughs> So the Grimmer Next Door goes to the movies. I know, right? We could be complete movie critics, too. We can do a podcast on movies. Well, actually, you know, maybe in a sense. I, we're going off topic, but that's okay. That That's kind of what this whole show is. We're not all one thing. Well, what's great is we get the fun stuff out there. So when we get into the uh, more of the harsh issue later, it's not so bad. That's true. Um, I'm going to give it... From my perspective, between a 0 to a 5, I'm going to give it a, a very hard C. Um, I felt that the story... a letter? Did I say that? You I? said 0 to, to 5, and you said C. Did I say C? I meant 3. I'm sorry, I'm watching, <laughs> a, I'm watching the kid over there, and I distracted myself. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, the kid actually... He does. The kid is skateboarding with a cat. A yeah. dipstick. Okay, so I was like, there's a cat. See, that's what just happened. Oh, so many things can go wrong right there. Oh, boy, and he's in the street. Okay, we just went With back no to the... no shoes. Oh, oh, gosh. So, as we're sitting here, I'm watching this. As I'm talking, I mentioned from zero to, to five. I said, see, because I'm watching this kid go down this little hill right here on a skateboard and what appeared to have been something furry in his hands, which was a cat. You're an idiot. Oh, gosh. These kids around here, some of them really do worry me. When they time the cars and when to, to ride by them, there's something wrong. Oh, boy. Okay, well, With back... no parent supervision. I, I've seen, I've actually adult. seen people almost hit these kids. Mm -hmm. Thank God it has not happened. But I've actually seen one time one person stop their truck, almost hit a kid, get out the car, and start yelling profusely at the mom who finally came outside. She came outside to see it, and he started yelling at her. A few years ago. Um, anyway, um, I've actually seen the police over there talking to them, too. All right, so zero to five, I give it a hard three. Thank you for, for that correction there. Um, the story was, uh, you know, the, my problem I'm still having, and we talked about this after the movie in the car, the script was originally 
the turtles were from space. Yeah, we're not doing any kind of spoilers right now. No, 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 no spoilers. This is I'm not going to tell you about what happened in the movie, but originally, orig- originally Michael Bay had the script. Um, I want to say three years ago, might have been two. Wasn't oh, it was that... a, I thought it was a while. They've been trying to make this for a long time. I I I remember. Well, they've been trying to make it for a while. Um, the actual movie itself, I remember Michael Bay was on board. And I thought it was two years ago, right after Transformers. Um, he was talking about this and the script actually said the turtles were from space um if any of you don't know anything about movies and anything to do with this um a lot of people on fan websites just went nuts they referenced it in the movie but ultimately i I would have boycotted the entire movie if they made it a space turtles I'm sorry. That's Turtles just, from space. That's absolutely butchering it. I they, mean, they did butcher it, no, though. No, I mean, they did make references to the first movie. That was pretty awesome. and She did make... Um, and Megan Fox did do a, a Shia LaBeouf from Transformers moment. That a, was okay. It was. It was. Um, there were some moments that were okay. I, I, You know, the one thing I wasn't upset about was I wasn't upset with how the Turtles looked. Where because I guess I've seen the transformation since the early artwork back in I think eighty or eighty one was the they, comic. They made Donatello look like an absolute nerd. Did he look like Simon to you? He looked Ugh. like Simon from the Chipmunks. It was annoying. It's yes, he was a brainiac, but it didn't. What was he, with the goggles all the time? And then and then the Simon kind of point dexter glasses with the tape around the, the bridge. I uh, didn't understand that at all. But. Anyhow. A reimagination. I mean, it's okay, but... I give it a four out of five. I liked it. Uh, I really did. Um, and how many other movies that we love that they actually changed the, the script to, or it changed the whole outlook to, that we still love today, but our parents are like, shh. I don't know. I'm, I'm really critical. I mean, if, if, you know, honestly, I should just do a separate podcast. You know, what, what happened in the movies? You know, what's out in the movies and tell what my, my review is. Um, I, I personally, I, I could think this movie really needed a lot of work. A bad, bad choice. <sighs> but, but that was my movie to choose. And actually, I haven't told you this yet. I really could have gone without seeing Ninja Turtles. But you made such a stink about the movie. <laughs> I made it a point that I wanted to go see this movie for my birthday. I could have seriously waited for it to come out on DVD. She's right, folks. I, I, I have, ever since I heard about this movie, I have been kicking, screaming, pouting, just about anything you can possibly do about a movie that's coming out. I, it, was, it was one of those movies that you just knew was going to end up pretty poopish. I, I was, I'm that not was as... one of the whole reasons why I wanted to see it. Oh, I could have waited. I could have totally waited, but it just... I'm glad I saw it, though. I'm glad we saw it. Yeah. All right. I so, was telling people at the salon that... The only reason why I want to go see this is because Chris does it. <laughs> and, and that explains why everybody was like, well, hey, we'll see you on Monday. Hope uh, hope to hear that you hated the movie. And I, can, <laughs> I can see why now. All righty. Well. <laughs> well, I got an awesome gift. Buying gifts for me are very difficult. That is true. I am not the one that wants lavish things. I I'm not the one that wants expensive things. I want stuff that I can use. She's Mrs. Practical. Yeah. Carry on. So, <laughs> if if it's a gift I can't really use, you know, it's it comes from the heart, and I I still appreciate it. Um, but this time I got a big old fluffy soft body pillow. Well, okay. That folks. is so awesome. I I think it was last year you inherited mine last year. I had bought one early last year, like probably March, April of last year, maybe sooner, I don't know. And then I left, and Sarah inherited my pillow. Well, I guess it was kind of deflated, as she said, which, you know... I was able to fold the body pillow in half and put another pillow underneath it and be just fine. Well, I, you know, <laughs> not saying that this one won't do the same, but your pillowcase probably won't let it. I love that pillowcase. Oh my gosh, so, like I said, I'm very, like Chris said, I'm very practical, and I've been saying for a very long time I needed a good pillow, but I can never bring myself to buy one. I just couldn't do it. It's like, I got pillows, yeah, I wake up- Our bed is full of pillows. Yeah, but they're not the soft, they're real flat, they're firm, or 
you know, it's not fun pillows that are soft and fluffy and that I can just sink into. So, but I couldn't bring myself to buy one. I mean, they're not they're super expensive. I know the one that you got is more on the higher end. But, um, even the cheapies, I couldn't bring myself to buy one. And, <laughs> by my surprise, here's this big fluffy pillow. <laughs> I was like, yes! <laughs> well, okay, you didn't know what it was. Your reaction was precious this morning. So I bring it out to her, and she kind of looks half at a, it. half awake, yeah. by the way. I, I figured you were just kind of like, yeah, not not there yet. But it was just so funny. She kind of looks at it with, you know, morning eyes. Okay, thank you. And it was just like, I know, I knew at that moment, I knew you didn't know what it was. You were kind of still in between, like, I'm, I'm, I'm still waking up. Why are we doing this right now? <laughs> um, but it was really comical. Um, and it, okay, go on. And then they brought me out this t-shirt that's written on it. It says, happy birthday, and I can't remember. Love. Oh, love, I'm reading it upside down. <laughs> Claire and Chris, and it's got my my age on the other side. It's pretty awesome. It makes it kind of look like a jersey in a sense. That, that was the idea. I wanted to have that baseball jersey because we do have such great moments in Springfield. So I wanted to have that baseball look. I had Claire write her name on it. With, with puffy, puffy paint. Yep, puffy Chris paint. Chris knows what puffy paint is. <laughs> well, and multicolor puffy paint. Not just one color. Three. Yeah. I would have done four. I really should have done four as I look at it. So, I, you know, I wanted to do the back side, but I realized I probably wouldn't have dried. And, oh, boy. So, anyway. Well, at least when I sit down on things, it's not going to stick to my back. That's true. Because it kind of gets sticky. Yeah, and it'll so. rip off. It'll be bad. Yeah. yeah, so it's perfect the way it is. Made you breakfast. Made you lunch. <laughs> made you dinner. So, you had three meals made by me. <laughs> I didn't have to cook anything today. So, I, I hope... And this is weird, because on Mother's Day, I still cooked. You wanted to, though. You, you had made it clear, I want to at least cook because... Well, it was a very elaborate meal that... I'm the only one that really knows how to make or have the patience to make because this stuff takes time. And t the meal that I made took two hours to, to make. But you had said, I want to make dinner because I want to do that for my mom. True. So you were doing that for your mom, even but though we were all. Most of the time, I still still cook even on days for me or days, yeah. You know. I try not to. I love cooking. Yeah. So no, it doesn't really matter for me. Oh, and your cake? Sarah wanted, I, you know, obviously we gave her options. She wanted actual chocolate cake. But in cupcakes. So, yeah. got the cu the cake mix for chocolate cake, made them into cupcakes, and then put uh, cream cheese icing? Yes. Yeah, on top. Yes. Unfortunately, somebody, when they were making the barbecue chicken today, some aluminum foil ended up on there, and that just kind of ruined it. Yeah, I have a really hard time dealing with textures. Um, I ruined your meal. That's all I no, there is to it's like, okay, rice pudding. I cannot touch that stuff. Or no, no, not tapioca. rice pudding. Tapioca. Yeah. I cannot touch tapioca. I can understand that. Stuff that has, the texture is not supposed to be that. It, pudding is supposed to be smooth. Well, rice pudding is the same way too, though. I mean, you're okay, right. It's I chunky. love. I can't do it. it. Textures drive me bonkers. I love tapioca, though. I haven't had tapioca pudding in a long time. Those oh, little I snack mean, pack ones. Oh, my gosh. I could eat a whole box at one time. So, it was a texture thing. It's a mental thing. And it kind of made me sick. Wait. So. In, in Walking Dead last season, didn't uh, the boy, didn't he find, like, a bucket of tapioca pudding or something? And, like, ate the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, I'm with him on that. Okay. If anybody watches The Walking Dead and you saw that, I think it was tapioca. Is either that or chocolate pudding? Oh, it was a pudding. It wasn't a tapioca. It might have been vanilla pudding or chocolate pudding. Yeah, it I don't was. Know. All anyway, I know is that I give have... me a tub of that, and I'll eat a whole tub of that. Oh, I have a big thing with texture. Claire has this ball that <laughs> is um, just a regular. Um, what are those balls? A kickball. Yeah, it's a little jelly ball. No, a kickball. Jelly ball. Okay, kickball. Jelly ball with this cloth around it. Yes. And I pick thin, it up. Thin cloth. I picked it up one time, and I can feel the texture of the uh, kickball underneath the fabric, and the fabric itself was fuzzy. I about puked feeling that. Wait, wait, wait. It's actually the jelly ball underneath the fabric that bugs you? I don't know what a jelly... It's not the fabric? It's the same thing as a kickball. They used to call them jelly balls. Oh, well, they're I like jelly. kickballs when I was kids. They were the same, yeah. right around the same time. They just called they... them jelly balls because when you kick them, they're like kicking jelly. Oh, well, we call it kickballs. Okay. But, you know, it has those lines that go one way and then lines going the other way to texture it. Yeah. 
Well, it's that texture underneath cloth that drives me bonkers. That ball should either be a soft, fluffy fabric ball, or it should be a kickball. When you mix them, that feeling it makes me want to rip my nails off. You are, you are, you are very interesting. Well, I... It, I read about it. It's actually a mental issue. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I actually know. There's, I know a lot of people who have actually felt that way. Same thing with some trees that are weird. Yeah, you want to rip them apart. Yeah, yeah. The, the dead trees that... The moss growing on the trees doesn't bother me. Because I know it's supposed to be there. It's part of nature. That's what happens. But when it's a dead tree and it gets that little leafy stuff that kind of comes off, the, the fungus. Oh, I'm talking about it. I want to rip my Going back off. to California, remember oh. paper trees? Yeah, I would sit there and, and, and pull, pull on them and pull on them. Yeah, until the tree became smooth. <laughs> she did, folks. She Not would pick joke. and pick at it and pick at. It. Oh, it was, it was hilarious. Well, okay. Well, we spent the last um, fourteen <laughs> minutes. You know, it's it's funny. We've reverted back to different ways of recording the podcast. Um, even though we, as you can tell, you probably should be able to hear it. We are again, you know, outside. It's actually quite enjoyable, even though it rained earlier today. It's really enjoyable out here. Um, we're back outside, but we're, we're doing things a little different. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it or not. So, anyway. Um, let's see. Where was I going to go? Okay, so today's show, or maybe I should say this week's show, um, we're going to be discussing the controversy of pit bulls. Pro and con. So, I know a lot of people will probably be saying, I lean this way, I lean that way. Well... We're going to give our opinion, and since we have a lab pit mix, I think we have a pretty good idea of, of what they're like, get a little bit of an idea of different things, um, maybe shed some light, hopefully? Um, maybe. Maybe. At least uh, correct some of the uh, misconceptions. Yeah, yeah, definitely misconceptions. Um, I'd like to actually mention it, um, our good friend Craig, um, we will... Pretty much be losing him for a couple weeks, um, starting what in a week? Uh, yeah, next week from week from the mo- week from Monday. So you guys will will hear this on. Um, you'll be hearing this on Monday the 11th. Um, so he goes in for surgery on the 18th. I know he doesn't really listen to the show because he has to hear us all the time. So I can understand why he doesn't listen to it. Um, but we, your mom, <laughs> your mom, your mom's face, um, your mom's dad's face. <laughs> So, you know, I just want to, you know, of course, everybody out there, you know. Thoughts and prayers go definitely, with Definitely. You know, just, just kind of, uh, you know, send a message on Facebook. Because um, that's where pretty much everybody seems to get in touch with us. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, of course, we hate to see anybody, you know, be gone for two weeks. But, um, you know, obviously, illness happens. It'll be for the better. He'll, oh, yeah. he'll feel better after the surgery is done. He's, he's going to get his gallbladder removed. Which has got to be fun. So, um, but two weeks off. Hopefully, he'll be back at it. But um, we should see a little bit of him this week. He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't actually um, go in until a week from tomorrow for surgery. So, but I know he won't be in tomorrow, and I don't know how many times he'll be in this week. But uh, you know, obviously, it's it's such a tight knit group. We hate to see anybody go. Really, honestly, even even for the positives of having surgery, you need have you know have done. Um, let's see, last week, um, last week is a blur to me, um, as I mentioned in last Monday's episode, I was like, I got Zega this week, pray for me, um, I definitely needed it when it was over. Oh my gosh, Zega. Zega, She Zega. had the weirdest knots. She did, I, and I have all the dogs last week, she's the one that's gonna stand out, isn't she? Yeah, and <laughs> Zega, okay, I have to admit something. I've been spelling Zega's name wrong for the past four years. I would have thought that you were spelling it right. You spell it like they would in Street Fighters. Z-E-G-A. That's what I would have thought. That's how I thought. No. It's Z-H-I-G-A. Yeah. I. It's uh, a Native American name. Really? You know, I'm always on the back. I never hear this stuff. Yeah, and she's she's papered, and her whole name translated is uh, Little Black Bear. That, and you know what? That's very appropriate. Yeah. I did not know that. Uh, I thought it was Zega from Street Fighters. Anybody who's aware of the video game back in what early 90s, 92, 93, mm-hmm. um, Zega was the one character from Spain 
that wore a hockey mask and a little Wolverine claws. Oh, I didn't know that. Really? No, I, I didn't. Well, know I'm that. a video game nerd. But so. then on top of that, their last name is Starks and yes. not Stark. Yes, that 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 always gets me. I'm I was like, like, "Where's Tony?" I, I looked at I looked at them. I was like, "Okay, four years. You've been seeing me write her name this way. Why haven't you changed it?" Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> and I found photos on my Facebook with Zega having short hair. She came into me, and her hair never hanged below her belly. It was all uniform and made her, you know, look kind of round. Really? Yeah. Zega has um, about a good 16 inches of hair hanging down. 17 inches of hair hanging down. And uh, <laughs> um, I found older pictures when she first started coming to see me. And I was wondering why it took me so much, it took such little time to blow dry her as it does now. Yeah, because I, I was at it for a long time. I mean, the bath, like I said, folks, I was going to be in for a long job. And it was. But I got to give her one thing. It was the first time she let me do her head. Yeah, she was She was more of a mellow mood. Yeah, la the time before, oh, she was very uh, stubborn. So, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was definitely a difference. Yeah, and then... Um, and then Milo. Milo is a little, um, he looks like a Bashan. Is it the one, the last dog? The, the very lead. last dog. Yeah, he okay. had to leave to go get Claire, and I finished up the last dog on my own. And this puppy, I've been groomed, this was his, uh, third groom by me. I started him out as an itty bitty puppy. Itty bitty. When you take an itty bitty puppy, you know, nine weeks old, they're pretty much mellow. Most of the time. Not all the time. And they pretty much let you do what you want because they're so scared out of their mind. They don't know what you're going to do. So, first time was pretty okay. Second time, I'm like, okay, you're starting to get to that puppy stage. I, I want to wiggle. And then the last time, oh my gosh, he screamed at the top of his lungs for any kind of head work. So, that's a puppy defense mechanism. Scream as loud as you can, hurt the ears so that the person stops or the animal stops, whatever they're doing. And I got my clippers, and the, what you do is take the, the blade and mechanism off, turn on your clippers, and then you put them close to their face. So all they're feeling is um, vibration. A vibration, and nothing can hurt them. So you still take the, the moving mechanism and put it away from their face. But the vibration is the important part. I put it next to his cheek, behind his ear, and rah, 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 rah. I mean, he was screaming bloody murder, <laughs> bloody murder, just screaming and screaming and oh my goodness! And I was holding his little, his some of his chin hair, cheek hair, and other side of cheek hair, so that um, it's not pulling on him, so it doesn't hurt, and uh, it holds him still and safe. And he's just screaming his little lungs out. And I'm just sitting there. I was getting frustrated <laughs> because the loud noises does hurt. Um, oh, yeah, folks. I mean, obviously. you got to get used to dogs barking. You do. And, you know, stuff like that. Well, but that's why I listen to podcasts when I'm washing. Because between the sound of the dryer or them sometimes wanting to be like that, you can go deaf. Yeah, most of the time. If you can't handle dog barking, you're in the wrong business. Oh, yeah. Get but out. screaming obsessively the entire time. And I just kind of sat there and I put my head back. I was like, oh, come on, just stop. And Laura was looking into the window wondering why the dog was screaming so much. How many times does that happen? You'd be surprised, folks. A person can walk in and they'll hear a dog screaming and they always ask the one question, what's going on? Yeah. And, you know, it, if you don't, if you're not in that environment, you would be thinking the same thing. It is so common. I guess it's that mentality a lot of people get when they go to a dentist or they think about it. You'll hear a person screaming. That no, it doesn't really happen like that. In a grooming salon, it does. Right, and Laura just started laughing at me when I was done. She goes, "You looked so tired. You're like, come on, just, just, just let me do this." <laughs> and that that happens. And uh, another thing that happens too, like Chris was talking about, is dogs like to scream at the worst times. Oh, boy, right? <laughs> and I know this one gentleman um, had a question about what was going on. Well, I had a super aggressive dog that 
bit for everything on the lakes. Even the note said as far back as when it was first here that um, uh, bites for for feet and legs. That's one thing that Sarah never tells me about. So there'll be a dog and I'll get done with it and I'll be like, oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe. Just to let you know, this dog bites this area or will bite for this and Sarah will always say this. Oops. <laughs> I forgot to tell you. Well, it's, I don't get to the card right away, and I always ask, if the dog's going to be aggressive, the dog's going to be aggressive. You have to handle every dog like it's going to be aggressive. It, well, that is true. I'm not going to, I'm not going to take that away from you. You are correct. Yes. You are so, correct. So, this one dog freaking out for his legs. I'm halfway in the middle of the groom. It's not like I can stop now. And, um... The I was sitting down. It wasn't like I was standing up over him. I wasn't pulling on him or anything like that. That shows from uh, previous groomers. Uh, <laughs> went out and explained to him. I'm like, have you ever seen a nurse handle a baby? And he goes, no. I said, okay. An infant, newborn, straight out of the womb baby is flipped, turned, juggled, and moved in awkward positions while the baby is still gooey from coming out. Oh. Okay? That baby can slip. You can move it wrong and hurt them. But you know what? They are professionals. They've been doing it long enough. They know what they're doing. I know when Claire was born and the doctor had it, had her his hands around the back of her neck against her jawline. Yeah. I freaked out. Oh, you weren't you didn't see when she came out. Oh my gosh, it was almost like a a Scholes did this weird little kind of flip. summer, almost like a flip thing in mid-air almost. I mean, it freaked me out. I'm like, please catch her, please catch her. I mean, it all happened within seconds, not even it, seconds, but... Exactly. So you trust the doctors in doing it properly and right and not hurting your child. But to you, it looks like this, these people are juggling your infant. Right. Well, Which it's, just... it's, all, it's all strategic and it all makes sense to them. Yeah, so it's the same thing with grooming. I know the pressure points on the dog's legs that hold their leg out where it's not going to hurt them. And they can't move and they can't bite me. But when your dog's sitting there with their leg straight out, you might want to think, why are they doing that? <laughs> or if I have the dog turn around and its butt ends up in the air and they're standing on the front end, I'm trying to trim the nails. Well, if I did it the other way, trim the nails, they want to bite, that nail trim is right close to their tongue. Oh, yeah. I've seen dogs with marks on their tongue where they were split in half because the nails weren't trimmed right. Yikes. If they're not trimmed right and safely, the dog's nails are going to grow into their pad. They're going to get cut somehow. Or, one time that happened to me, I cut myself. I almost cut off a whole chunk of my finger. But luckily... My um, Julie was standing by and just kind of watching. I was like, uh oh, Julie, watch my dog. I go into the bathing room, put some uh, uh, hand soap on, wash it really good, dried it, and then uh, I was going to say duct tape <laughs> <laughs> and bandaged it real quick. Um, I don't have feeling in that, that corner of my finger anymore, uh, but it's still there. <laughs> Well, you it didn't your fall finger. Out. This is good, yeah. I mean, I I missed my actual nail. I just got the fatty tissue on the t on the side tip but of my finger. But you got some nerve ending. Yes, I did. I cut through some nerve endings. Um, it probably should use some stitches. But oh, I've got a few of those little spots on me. <laughs> yeah, so I just you know taped it up and called it good. So I had to explain to the guy. Hey, is my oh. dog all bloody? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's not what happened. Well, luckily, funny. it didn't gush blood. And that's how deep I cut it. Is that it didn't gush. It didn't gush. Oh, man. <laughs> it makes you think of gushers all of a sudden. You remember the, the gummies, gushers? I think they still have them. Remember I fell into the kennel and uh, oh, my ripped gosh. a piece of skin you off? You have had more little incidents while being here than even in California. I went to the emergency room about three times in California. That's true, but you've had a lot of run-ins. Yeah. Well, anyway. Well, also, I was working for a big box pet store. They make you go if you They even, make you go. If you breathe wrong, they make you go. They pay for your visit. They pay right. for your antibiotics. They pay for my tetanus shot. Woo-woo. <laughs> Sounds like fun, folks. Well, 
All right. Um, anything else on, on last week we want to hit? Because we're, um, we're are almost at a, at a half hour into this. Uh, basically, trying to pray for the Huskies. Um, Carla's dad is diagnosed with bladder cancer. Right. Um, and luckily they said it's 100% curable. They might have to take out the entire bladder and put yeah, it in a some, bag. There's some really cool things about that. We won't get into that, but, but there are some really cool things about bladder cancer to cure it. It's, it's not as bad as you think. But it's still a lot to go through, a yes. lot of doctor's visits. A lot of, yeah, some um, still, there's still surgery. Luckily, they, um, Dr. Kazimerick here in town is one of the best doctors. I mean, he helped my dad out yep. quite a bit. So uh, really praying for them and happy thoughts and good vibes or whatever you believe in. <laughs> good juju. <laughs> exactly. They could definitely use it right now. All right. Well, let's see. Um... I guess no better time than the present. Let's dive right into pit bulls. It's the the big question of the day. Is it a bad dog or just bad owners? Well, I want to say one thing and kind of put it to rest. Pit bull isn't a dog. It's a bad performer who's getting a star on the Walk of Fame. Oh, God. That has one type of song that he plays yeah. the entire time. And now he's with Enrique Iglesias Jr. <laughs> it's like, really? Seriously? So, we're, wait, we're not talking about that, that pit bull. No. Oh, the dog pit bull. Oh, oh I, um, I thought we were actually going to talk about something I really know about. I am guilty of this, too. Um, when I introduce Roxy, I'd say she's a lab pit. Because I don't know exactly what kind of, you know, bulldog she is. Um... The closest thing to Pitbull is an American Pitbull Terrier, okay? And that is a very old breed. It's not something new. It didn't just all of a sudden, in the 90s, become an aggressive dog that they just bred. Right. This breed has been around for a very long time. Um, the other types of breeds would be like an American Staffshire Terrier. A Staffshire, Staffshire Terrier. There's so many different types that lead to pit bull. Um, that is very misconstrued. Um, if you le if you read legislators that have um, gone into effect legislations, there you go. That have gone into effect um, prohibiting any type of pit bull dog in the area. They don't say any pit bulls. They say any pit bull. Breeds. Right. Well, we have one that's right near us, then spot right next to us. It's still Phelps County, but it's St. Yeah, St. James. James, they don't have a band yet, and I pray to God they don't, because people are starting to open their eyes to this crap. Well, it's a, it, this is a stupid concept, though, if it, if it would actually go into effect. Right. Um, I didn't know this until April and Lego, um, when I read the... The guidelines to having a pit bull or um, pit bull mix of any type, um, American pit bull, old English, you know, bulldog, any of those, it was in the legisl legislation. Um, I didn't know that St. James was like that until Lego's page. Right. I'm not sure how I found out about Lego's page. I think I just saw it somewhere. Yeah, you, you can't pawn it. I mean, I didn't come upon April until, oh my gosh, I think she sent me a message saying she had just heard the show for the first time, and this is way back when. Yeah, and I locked. I, I liked Lego's page a long time prior. Actually, I'm going to sidebar you. Even though we're involved with Pitbulls, I have to sidebar and just say, you know, to April, her and her boyfriend drove out this past Friday night to rescue a kitten from an idiot, a dumb idiot in Missouri who has been seeking out the opportunity to adopt a kitten for through every channel possible. And a guinea pig. And a guinea pig. And this moron, and I have no problems calling this person a moron, decided she doesn't know a damn thing about kittens. Well, it chewed up my cord to my phone, so I'm going to put it outside. Listen, lady, you're the idiot of the week. And trust me, we come across a lot of idiots of the week. You are the idiot of the week. And for that, I want to say thank you to April for just absolutely putting her kid in the car, 
driving out there. Her and her husband, and, yeah. Yep. A boyfriend. Boyfriend, sorry. Um, I think I, I think I'm right about this. Um, oh, that's a little <laughs> embarrassing. I think it's boyfriend. I'm pretty sure. Um, man. Her man. Man. There you go. Her man. Uh, but thank you. You know, you know, I was about ready to do it if it was somewhere close in town. It was, um, it, you know, what I like to call this group. I'm sorry, I know I just got off subject, but I like to call this tight, tight knit group that we're all part of, the Animal Mafia. You know, we've got Kim, who is like the godfather of cats, godmother, however you want to see this. You got April, who is just, you know, absolutely a boss when it comes to all kinds of animals. The level of dedication is pretty intense. Oh my intense. gosh. And then, you know, we're, we're always brought into it. It feels like this little animal mafia group out there trying to help all animals. I mean, it is an absolute pleasure to be part of these these lovely women and this whole group. Um, yeah, that, that, that chick with that, that cat got so embarrassed that she took down Yeah, she deleted the post, post. after, after um, I had posted my, my response. And then not that far afterwards, minutes later, she deleted it. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not the type that will go on there and start speaking. I'll, I'm doing research, and as I was doing research, going down the page, um, it was something yeah. about animals in St. James or something like that. And I was like, okay, well, let's see if she inquired this cat or adopted it or what happened. Well, there was about seven or eight different posts that she was trying to get a kitten from. Uh, from different people, and tried to get Kent from Kim. For a while now. She's been going yeah. on since April, I think you said? Uh, yeah, I think it was April when she, April of the month. Yeah, That April she the was month. trying to find a kitten. Right. And, you know, Kim just simply asked, have you tried kitten-proofing your house? And then she got all defensive. Yeah, she did. She's an idiot. She's an idiot. And, and I know I know two people who are listening to this podcast right now going, yep, she's an idiot. I, I, I have to keep it clean. But, yeah, you can imagine the words I want to call her, you know, just, you know, just, it's just, it's it's outrageous. And, this and, but, isn't ignorance. This isn't ignorance. This is a level of stupidity. This is just dumb. Like, I was yeah. dropped on my head three times kind of dumb. Oh. And I did it to myself dumb. Um, this woman is an idiot. She's the idiot of the week. And you know what, I guess what, what fits into the category is how I can lump this all into one segue is... The, a lot of the owners of pit bulls, in the breed itself, as Sarah was was mentioning, there's a lot of them who own this type of dog. So by the level of ignorance that this dum dum, and I've got the best word I can use right now without going absolutely off, this dum dum who had the kin, these dum dums around, and there's plenty of these dum dums out there are adopting dogs just like a pit bull, and they're not training them. They're not, you know, people like Jessie Queen, you know, we've mentioned her. If you haven't heard the episode where she's on, she's our obedience trainer. She did episode six, I think it was. You know, people like her who actually are in obedience training, they can help these dum-dums, but unfortunately, it doesn't help. Well, it's... Originally, um, I gotta pull something. Sorry, I know I completely yeah. threw you off there. I am sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Now we're back onto subject. Um, like I said, pit bull is not a true breed. Right. They just look at a dog with a block head and a a certain type of snout, and sometimes with their ears cropped or not. Right. They automatically assume that's a pit bull, and it. Drives me bonkers this whole time. I mean, I am guilty of saying pit bull because that's layman's terms. Yeah, well, a lot of people don't understand dogs. So I was, we came to agreement that we really need to do this episode to really help those that don't. I know that a lot of people, smaller dogs, don't like the pit bull um, type breeds because of their aggressiveness. But once again, back in the day when they're actually useful dogs. Um, they were not known to be aggressive towards humans. Right. They were there to go hunt large game, um, bears and such, and bulls. They were trained to go for the snout, just like the Akita. Um, the Akitas are, are meant to hunt bear out in Japan and such. Um, but these pit bull breeds... 
like people kind of like to say it. <laughs> um, we're not aggressive to humans. If you actually look in the history of time, bloodhounds used to be extremely vicious. They used to be, you get near them, they're going to bite you. Bloodhounds. You go to, to a bloodhound now, they're likely to sniff and lick your face off. <laughs> like my buddy Kelly's dog, um, Hobo, God rest his soul. Yep. Hobo was that way. He just wanted to, to be loved and flop around. But beforehand, they were very aggressive dogs. Now, I believe that these pit bull breeds can come back to a center, a, a, a happy center. Um, now, well, let, look at our house. We have three dogs that have aggressive tendencies. All three of our dogs are upon the aggressive tendency breed. You have the Akita, which over in, in Europe, there's a great deal of problems with those type of dogs. They're very aggressive, almost kind of what our pit bull attacks are here. Then, of course, you have Roxy, who has that lab pit mix. And then you have the Chihuahua. Now, when you look at all three of those dogs, each one of them have aggressive personalities or what should be or can have yeah. um, aggressive tendencies and and again you got to look at how all three were obtained you got the the akita that was abused and left in a garage and god only knows what was going on beat up on um, by the bigger male akita that they had and i wouldn't be surprised if the woman didn't do something too because that dog did have fear of people as well so that was that and, of course, we already know Roxy. We know how that situation was. And then we have the Chihuahua, which I don't know what her backstory is. So you got three dogs that have that perfect mentality to bite, attack, anything. And then you look at how ours are. Now, I'm not saying everybody's going to have the same luck we have. You know, not everybody's going to have three different dogs like we have who are going to be able to go off leash or to be able to do what ours are doing it might just be what we are doing some people might need more of an expertise like right. jesse uh, jesse queen who need to seek out help and training yeah um how to level them. now uh if i were if we were to be the ones who living in saint james and we had roxy i would have taken jesse queen's classes and kept the certificate mm -hmm. so that if anything happened, I could show them, look, she went through these classes. She has come this far. And you can speak to Jesse about this. Mm -hmm. You know, I know April takes Lego yes. to Jesse as well. Um, and he graduated. So proud of him. I was very proud. Yeah. I hope one day to meet him. I really do. I, I, I'm hoping but, that a lot of things do happen. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, I, was still, I, I was talking about you know, the future with April. I won't mention it on here because I don't know how much of what we talk about off air is, is to go on air, but her thought of what she wants to do out in St. James, I'm kind of hoping she goes through with that process. Yeah. Um, uh, as I like, long as it I like the process. Drain them. Yeah, as long as it yeah. doesn't drain their, their bank account, I do hope they do it. But, um, <clears throat> I, I think I, for, for me, I look like for a lot of us, we spend a lot of our time on YouTube. And how many times do you just see it? It's just everything. You'll see pit bull attack, pit bull attack. And yeah. look, folks, I'm not saying that pit bulls don't do it. I'm not saying that they're not going to have, you know, something's going to happen. I, I think the hard part for me, you know, having a almost six-year-old and you go online and I don't know, there's not a week that will go by you don't see it, child attacked by pit bull, and they're mangled. The poor kid is mangled. And it just, it kills me because I look in the house here we have, you know, that breed and a six-year-old, and it scares me to death. Even though I know what ours is like, I still, I think to myself, come on, folks. Get, if you're going to have this dog, if you don't have kids, train your dog. Because these dogs get loose, you know, for some reason, you know, come on. If you don't really take care of the dog and you've given it bad. Well, and by accident gets out or something like I'm, that. I'm, that I'm just talking about the dum-dums out there, that they just don't put any security to make sure the dog's enclosed, it gets out, it attacks. You know, they're, those are the dum-dums. Well, see, okay, you're talking about the dum-dums, right? Yeah. Out in California where we're from. Yes, there's a lot of those dum-dums. Southern dum -dums. California, yes. nonetheless. Um, 
closest to the border. I'll just leave it at that. And you, you more or less lived closer to the... You, you were in the Orange County area a lot longer than I was. Yeah. I spent more of my time in the Los Angeles area, and there's a great deal of that breed out there. Well, see, okay, that's the problem. I, myself, don't believe it's the breed's fault. No. I believe it's the dum-dums who choose this breed. Very, very um, much. When you look at all the game bangers out there, they have Pipple. Yep. They have, um, or Pipple... Type remember, Pipple is a catch. You know, catch them all. Yep. You know, catch them all. The this is catchphrase for all of them. Yes. Okay. Um, it's the it's, umbrella. Yeah. Instead of saying you know, Am Staff, uh, you know, Staffshire Terrier. You know, instead Can you of, imagine a game better going? Yeah, I got me a an Ash Tire Terrier, yo. <laughs> I, can, I can't see that. I just, I it just doesn't and, work. <laughs> I got Am Staff, homie. Yeah, yeah. yo. <laughs> so. Sup, you got over there. They take those breeds, right? And since you get their ears, since most of them have their ears cropped, that and drives cut, me nuts. It looks more intimidating. Yes. Okay. Um, they start out with the pippled style dog type dog, or a Rottweiler. If they're rich game bangers, you'll see a Doberman Pinscher. Well, that's usually when they're selling, you know, some kind of drugs to go right. with it, or or guns. So that's the the the. Cheap game banger goes for the <laughs> <laughs> the pitbull type dog. The cheap dog. game banger. And then you got the the they got some money, so they go for a Rottweiler, because you can pick up a pitbull style puppy for cheap, if not free. I'll I'll actually give you an insight to this. In Bell Gardens, I remember Lewis, my stepbrother. He they had there was puppies of a of a pit, and they were just giving them to anybody who was in the right. area. And then. The higher ups typically go for Doberman pinchers. That's what I've seen when I was in California. Um, I've always been a love of dogs. I've had a love of dogs since I was very little, thanks to my dad. Um, I didn't start actually doing research until I started grooming. Because uh, you kind of need to know what kind of dog's coming in so you don't get your face bit off. But um, they have been used for so many aggressive issues. The dog fighting has been the worst. The protecting of the facility. So if a cop raises their house, the dog's going to try to take down a cop. Dogs, The cop's just going to shoot the dog because the cop's got to be worried about his, his own protection. You know? And I don't mean those chicken cops that shoot a dog that's in the yard in a chain before they enter the house. That is a, a topic that, that I do want to. I do want to cover that. I do want to cover so, something like that in another episode. There are other ways of doing it, right? And so we, we'll, we'll do an episode on that. I'm talking about a dog that is trained to bite whatever that enters the house that's not allowed to enter the house. Right. Um. These dogs are getting such bad raps for so long, for probably at least fifteen to twenty years. They have about twenty years, yeah. From where, when I started becoming coherent, really. Yeah, well, I think it's been going on a little a bit longer, longer, but yeah, dude. Yeah. But when history tells you that this, these types of breeds of dogs were never aggressive towards humans, they're highly intelligent breed. They're very smart. So when you take a smart breed, you can train them properly. You know, at one point in time, there was more German Shepherd attacks than. Oh, yeah. Any kind of pit bull type dog. I'd say um, within the last 30 years. Yeah. So, now you get a puppy. You raise it up properly. You teach him the basic commandments. Okay. Um, sit, stay, leave it, drop it. Okay. Another thing is there is no physical evidence that shows that pit bull type dogs have locked jaw. From my research that I've done, they don't have lockjaw, but they don't want to let go of what they have. It's like prey. Like, I, this yeah, is my prey. I caught it. Exactly. They don't want to let go. So if you train them properly to let things go at a very young age, yeah, you're, 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 set. you're okay. All right? So well, that, that's, that's where the Durable, I really love the Durable for that one reason, because it has that little place 
a little place to put their actual mouth on the ball and run around with it, bring it to the people. Yes, to their and, owner. and I would suggest finding something for them to chew on so they can get that urge of chewing right. out. Right. We did an episode with um, Officer Steve Gray with the canine unit, Rocco. Officer, uh, episode 16. Well, when Rocco finds any kind of paraphernalia anywhere, um, Officer Gray gives him a chew ball. Um, just some, just a regular just a tennis, tennis ball. ball. Yep. So he can get that urge out. He gets that energy out of that. Mm -hmm. That's what we do with Roxy. Yeah, it's a, get... that's a soothing. It's exactly. Like, yeah, it's all, it's an awesome thing. I'd say spray some uh, Tropiclean on it. That spray we talked about last episode. Two birds, one stone. Yeah, it gets teeth clean and releases energy. There you go. So, um, I suggest that with basically any dog. Yep. They love to chew. It gets the, the urge out. Um... And proper behavior, socialize them, take them out, walks. Um, socialize, socialize, <laughs> socialize. Ask them to, ask people, if they don't mind, come up and say hello to your dog. Yep. And if they see a dog's tongue hanging out its mouth, butt wagging, <laughs> now we know, people type dogs don't just wag their tail, they'll wag their entire butt. <laughs> it's signs that, hey, everything's okay. Now if the dog's still, and his tail is wagging, and concentrated look on his face, I would leave him alone. Yep. That is a bad sign that he's either stressed out, or he sees something he doesn't like. I would just leave it alone. We'll see with Roxy. Roxy will just, her hair on her back will lift, she'll start growling, and her, her eyes are locked. Yeah. And it's usually just an animal that's walking by, mostly a cat. Or something she sees somebody walking. Yeah, there's close somebody to her house. anywhere within probably I'd say fifty feet. So there it is. A puppy. A pit bull type dog, puppy, can grow up to be a very healthy, well rounded dog. Um, most attacks that have happened as I was doing my research is from a dog that has been rescued. Okay. Um now moving on to the rescue part. We, I, I look at us, I say we rescued Roxy. Yes, we did. Um, I no longer talk to my brother because of this. And uh, is, I've said that many times. Um, he used to throw, put Roxy outside when she peed in the house. And when she was a puppy, it was during the snow. So she was out in the snow with hardly any hair and a puppy for who knows how long. So she would get yelled at when she peed on the couch. Well, she, she just still had, does. She still. Well, no, she doesn't no, really have that. It was. She I, didn't. She she stopped that once we moved in. I was thinking. I was thinking control. of Katana when you pet her. She does her little tinkle dance. Sometimes she does, but it was it was a, it, a nervous bladder issue. Yeah. And she got excited. She just peed. It didn't stop until I got into the house and I told my mom and dad to for one kick the brother out. And two, don't pay attention to Roxy when you walk in the door. You wait till she's on the floor and she's calmed down enough and then say hello. Uh, you know, it's so, so funny. I, I remember these times, but it's so far and long ago. Yeah. It's like it was a different dog. Yeah. Now, uh, let me ask you. Here's a question that, that is popping in my mind. Do you think that incorporating Katana in the house even magnified her ability to calm down? I don't... I don't know. I I, I always felt like, like have, Katana was that perfect yin to her yang. I don't know, because... Um, there's a big old spider coming down right there. Huh. <laughs> Spiders! Um, I don't know. Gress, um, the aggression issue with Ross, Roxy... Um, Roxy did have aggression, and when we first got here, um, she showed signs towards Claire. Yeah, she had her. She had she a couple had, moments. She had a couple moments where she didn't look at Claire as a, a, a human, mm -hmm. but more of as a puppy. Get away from my food. Yes. Well, yeah, well, but you have a kid. You got food. You, it's it's inevitable. So, if you rescue a <coughs> pit bull type dog. You don't know its background, or if it has been, you know, abused during its past life. Um, there's precautions that you need to take. Uh, 
Roxy, we don't leave alone with Claire. Um, now this is just precautions that we take because we don't want an incident to happen. We talk And you can't always prevent everything. You know, that's one thing. We're not saying that there's 100% guarantee that a dog will attack. Every dog can attack. Right. I but, mean, cats will bite. Cats will attack. Yeah, true. Um, Animals but will. But with Roxy specifically, knowing that she did not come from a great home originally, I will not let Roxy be alone with Claire. Right. But then again, we taught Claire, since the day we moved in here, you leave her alone. Okay? Not to be scared of her, that Roxy's there to protect her. Just leave her alone. Right. And then as we continue, we slowly graduated to, you know, Claire petting Roxy. Roxy didn't quite like it. Well, we corrected Roxy. Right. Because Roxy needed to know that Claire wasn't going to hurt her. You know, it's, it's funny because, again, it's like a dog I don't recognize in the stories, but I remember this all happening. Yeah. So weird. It doesn't seem like Roxy at all. Doesn't seem she, like Roxy at all. She did try to nip Claire when Claire got too close to her food. Yep. Well, we nipped that in the bud. We corrected both of them. Yeah. We corrected Roxy first because you got to correct that stuff right away while it's right there in front of their brain because they don't have a very big memory. So you don't want to correct them 20 minutes later and expect them to know what they did wrong. Right. Uh, child, you can. So we correct Roxy, make Roxy sit and submit. Right. Sit down, lay down. Or sit and lay down. You don't want to say sit down and then lay down. Confuses them. So sit, lay down, and you make her stay there until she completely submits. And then you get her up. We make her go to her bedroom. We actually put Roxy in timeout. Yeah, Roxy actually spent a lot of time in, in go to your room. Go to your room. Let's go to your room, Roxy. So she knows when she does Tail in between the legs, walked herself in there. Shut the door, let her sit in there for about 10, 15 minutes. We go to Claire. Claire, don't you ever go to her food again. That is her food, not yours. You don't like it when the dog puts its face right in the middle of your food, do you? Yeah. No. You know, Claire was, at this time, uh, two. Yeah. She was about two, two and a half. It, which is funny because you, you really think about it. She, you know, two and a half year olds, you know, we're talking literally three years ago around now is when this all took place. A little bit even before now, obviously, a few months before. It, you know, she's come a long way with, with the dogs, too, having to learn dog behavior. Yeah, and how to proper, properly greet them and yep. stuff like that. She's really good about that. I can, you kind of have to with us. <laughs> that is true. So, you know, with any kind of rescue pit bull type dog, you want to make sure that you keep your family safe, too. Yes. A lot of these attacks, from what I've seen... I'm not saying all of them, but what I've seen, the parents that of the child that was attacked was not being very smart when handling situations. They think all because of that that dog is sweet to and good to them. Yes, that's going to be good to the kids. Yeah, you got to understand it. They There's look a at master. the kids as a puppy. Yes, or they, or even the, even look at them as a rival. Mm -hmm. You've seen that as well. A lot of dogs will see a, a child as a rival. That's a very good point. They want their they want the attention, and Master is not giving them attention because this little squirt yeah is taking it from them. And they don't understand that that's a fur that's not a furless you know little you know puppy. That's in their mind are like furless puppy, I guess. And then they'll they'll fight it. <laughs> they will. Um, and yet sometimes when you rescue one, they are going to be the biggest sweetest protectors ever. And they won't let anything happen to their puppies. Yep. I don't think, I don't see that same mentality on Roxy as I did before. Yeah, as we broke her into the what she is now. Look where she sleeps at night. Yeah, she sleeps at the foot of the bed. She's always at the foot of the bed. And and then here's the big thing. Now, this is something we just started doing. And it, it happened by, you know, coincidence. Um, Claire and I like to play a little bit of soccer. What we do is we just kind of kick the ball to each other, but, you know, she'll be starting soccer in a month or so. A couple weeks. Yeah, and um, so, you know, being being the, the, the kind of dad that I am, I want to be part of her team. I want to be part of everything I can. Um, you know, I'm trying to get her used to all this stuff before. 
Well, Roxy was outside with us, and I'm kicking the ball, and Roxy jumps at the ball. Okay, that's an odd one, but whatever. It wasn't to attack the ball. It wasn't to do anything except for join in the game. So then it became this little thing of, okay, it's almost like monkey in the middle with, with Roxy, where Claire will kick the ball to me, and Roxy will try to stop it like a goalie, or she'll chase the ball. Now, here's the kicker, folks. Roxy, when it gets close to Claire, she's at full force running. And it's now the ball is right ne next to Claire. Roxy's still running. She hits the brakes and stops. And Claire can pick that ball up. She can kick that ball. She can do whatever she wants. Roxy stops. Yeah. And comes see, back over towards me. Even though Roxy shows so much restraint when the ball gets to Claire, I'm still not going to let Claire go out there and play soccer with Roxy alone. No. It's, no. it's, you've got to have some kind of caution in it. Um, I'm kind of, I like to find a happy medium. You know, I don't want bans on these dogs, but I want people to be cautious. I want education to be the, the key point here. Exactly. And if you're going to have that kind of dog, you need to take X, Y, Z amount of hours of some kind of training. Yeah. You and your animal. Yeah. I, I would have no problem take. I would take the classes even... Even, even, now. Car, even now, it's like if they, if they said, okay, you have this dog, you're going to have to take, you know, let's just say eight hours of some kind of training, and the dog has to be part of it. Okay, fine. I mean, I know what our dog is like. I know she's she's fine, but I'd still do it because, to me, it's like, hey, you know what, that's okay. Well, see, the last night, I think it was, we were watching Dexter on the TV. And yeah, we, we watch, we, had, we do Netflix, and we'll, well, we watch regular TV, we watch Netflix, we like to go back to old shows that seasons already ran through, run the whole season through. And then Roxy was on the bed, Katana was on the bed. Uh, Belle, Belle was on the bed, and, and both Claire cats was. were somewhere in the room, I know I that. Know. But Claire was on the bed. Well, Claire got up and sat next to Roxy. Well, Roxy growled at her. So what did I do? Yep. Roxy, go to your room. Yep. Right then and there. Go to your room. That was that was hard on her too. That and was so hard. she just stopped. She kind of turned back and looked at us like, "Do I have to?" And snapped my fingers and I, go to your room. That was and hard. And she on went her. into the other room. Tail in between leg. And she knew that you don't do that. And it's basically if you if you let the dog growl and not correct it right then and there, right. then they think they have power to basically parent. Yes. The dog or the the kid. So, no, Roxy, you are not going to parent my child because she's sitting up against Well, you. she's on our bed, and it's it's not, you know, honestly, it's our bed. It's not animal bed. It's a privilege for the animals to be on the bed, and they need to see it that way. I'm a firm believer that you don't let anything in your house become your dog's. I do, nothing in our house is strictly for the dog. That's true. Um, because well, if food. they think that it is theirs, yeah. they are going to have a possession issue with it. That's true. Roxy was thinking that was her bed. Yes. No, it's not. Get off my bed now. Go to your room. She did it. And then before the night was over, it's, you know, Roxy, come here. So she came over, sat down, and you can just kind of tell she was just, I'm sorry. Yeah. Pet her head. Let's go. Go outside again, so they go to the last potty break before you went to bed. The it's other, the other, the other thing before you and go forward. Another thing about like you had said, we wouldn't let Claire go and play soccer with Roxy. Roxy will not play soccer with just me alone either. Um, I tried it yesterday or the day before. I came out here with the ball. I was kicking the ball to her. It was just her and I. She didn't want to play. You were out here with me. You saw it. Yeah. She wants Claire and I to be present. And that's the only way she'll play it. And she picks it up in her mouth, drops it. I can put my foot right there in, in her path where my foot would be right by her mouth. She wouldn't attack. But, again, you have what's been, you know, a, a ground of something that see, you, we, we worked with. Another thing, too, is that Roxy will get a little overexcited yeah. and go all the way to Claire to get the ball. Mm -hmm. But we've taught Claire, you don't reach down and grab it. The dog's excited. Okay. And of course you call we, her. Yeah, we, we Roxy get back. 
And she comes away from Claire, so Claire can get the ball. Yeah, Roxy, so back, it's, it's, and that's, that's it. It's teaching your child and your four-legged child. These yeah, people who, the a lot of these accidents or um, incidents. incidents can be prevented. Yes. I mean, there are some times where there is a genetic problem with the dog or who has had a brain disorder when they're a puppy. And, and this and does I'm happen. Going to, yeah. I'm going to re- uh, refer to uh, the lady that tried to get a restraining order against Chris and I because we're just so violent. We're, I we're was barely home. People. I had barely gotten home and she's making all those stupid claims. It's like, I wasn't even <laughs> here. I have Look at my passport. It, it actually <laughs> shows a stamp. How could I even... Oh, how, idiot. How could I have gone to her house and threatened her when I was in the Middle East? <laughs> oh, man. Where, I, where all the problems are happening right now is where I was. How is that even possible? But anywho, um, the time that we were friends, she had a dog named Link. Link was a pit bull type dog. That dog scared me. It had a bunch of different type of pit bull type breeds in them. Um, I couldn't put my finger on any one. Um, but it did descent from one of them. He had an actual disease that... Oh, we're going over our time. An actual disease that... Uh, Affected his brain. It was a genetic problem, probably, as well. It was some kind of virus. I I have a feeling it it might have been a... It was a disease. It was an actual disease. um, She brought me the paperwork. Do you think it it came from other, you know, it it could have been in the litter? He had it from the puppy. But I'm thinking, could it have been in litter? Like... Something. He came in contact with something. I wish I could remember exactly what the disease was. Um, But he went off and bit her brother. And constantly was biting out of nothing. Just someone walked by and he'd bite. It was a mental problem. Right. She went and she treated him, but it wasn't enough. The dog was still scarred and still had that. And she didn't want to take the, the proper ways to go and get trained. And folks, this is so not right. Go on. So instead of going out and taking the dog and doing everything you possibly can to help this dog live in a happy life, she went and she put it down. She put a gun to its head and blew its, blew its head out. Now, I, I, of course, when I found out what she did... Oh, we called many I, people. I definitely called uh, around. In this state, in Missouri, it is legal, and they call They say it, and this is the law. It says, you are allowed, and they use the word allowed in, in a very sarcastic way, you're allowed to put down a dog as long as you use a, and I'm going to use air quotes, clean, it's a kill shot. Right. Now, the Humane Society do not agree with it. ASPCA don't agree with it. But it is a law. You can do it here. And yeah, I, they can, and as long as it took one shot. Yep. And there was no proof to say there wasn't more than one shot. There was nothing they could have done. Yeah. I, uh, come on. Folks, Euthanization... Is a lot easier. It's it's humane. You shouldn't put a gun to any animal's head and pull the trigger. Well, for one, it scars you. No, you want to scar Two. that that person. That oh, person's right. She she doesn't give a care of anybody but herself. And but, folks, she's nowhere anywhere near this town because if she was, I know the animal mafia would be the pet mafia, as I call them, would definitely love to know. I she's gone. She's far gone from here. Thank God, but. It's, it's, it's terrible. Yeah, it's, it was pretty bad. So there's times where you think that it, you just can't do it. Well, don't be a layman. Don't be this person who just doesn't care and doesn't want to put in the extra effort to help this animal. Yeah, it's easier just to put it down. But come on, what kind of person does that make you? Yeah, honestly. The so, dog, the dog probably should have been put down. That I agree on. Well, I but, think what happened was that the disease was so bad, it really did screw this dog up. Yeah. You know, I have always said from the very beginning that human life means more to me than anything else. Oh yeah. Now, counteract that with some scum that I see in the prisons. No, that's not the case. <laughs> I would much rather save a, a ravenous pit bull than... A rapist? A rapist. Child molester, yeah. Exactly. There, there are some... 
there's no absolutes in life. Yeah. In life, but for the majority, I believe human life is more important. I will save my daughter before I save my animals. Yes. Um. Plus, I think they're smart enough to get out of the house on their own. They'll follow us. So they would follow us. So, um, <clears throat> if a dog is going to threaten life or who has hurt multiple people, that's one thing. But the dog should have a chance to recorrect itself and then go to a rehab facility, basically for dogs. There are out there, especially for pit bull type dogs, and get rehabilitated. Yeah. And then homed to someone who is a single person um, or a family who cannot have kids and don't want kids. Yeah, mother, a woman and uh, man, man and man, woman whatever. and woman, whatever you are. It doesn't really matter. As long as they, they have no plans in life to have a child. Yeah. Yeah, don't have and a child keep, involved in this. Exactly. Um, or if you do have a child involved, you just got to be careful. Well, I'm going to use Educate us. Educate your child. You've, you've heard our stories of what we're what we've done. Good example here is the training never ends. Nope. Let me be clear, everybody. The training never ends. Today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. You just, you never stop. And that's another bit, part of this problem here. A lot of people just don't want to put the time out. It's it's a badass dog. That's, that's the mentality of it. I have a guard dog. So... If you get near my yard, it'll attack you. It, Honestly, that's not the way you really should be doing things. Because well, yeah, the innocent people are going to get hurt at some point. There's so many places around the U.S. alone that is anti-pit bull type dogs. Where you cannot have it. My buddy Rena, she was on one of the episodes earlier when we were in Kansas City. Um, she had to rehome her dog. Her, her uh, I think he was an, an, an Amstaff. American Staffshire Terrier um, had to rehome him because when they moved to Colorado, it was a no bully breed county. Right. So, they, so that means the the Amstaffs, the the Staffshire Terriers, the uh, old English Bulldogs weren't allowed. Um, American Bulldogs were but not allowed. But weed is allowed. But you can get high. Yep. You just can't have a dog that's aggressive. Hey. You know, or or hey, to some shown. people, that's all that matters. But it, if you look to in history, the the biggest amount of of pit bull type dog related incidents have gone down. Yeah, people are becoming more wiser to the fact. People are understanding this breed better, and honestly, you have to get the scum of the earth. You got to stop them from owning these dogs. I guarantee you, you saw. Those, you know, some of those uh, aggressive redneck hillbillies, if you stop them, if you stop those gangbangers in Southern California. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, we can go to a lot of parts of the country. You know, I'm, to I'm have saying them. It's, it's not just one type of race. It's it's, it's just the dum-dums. It's the exactly. dum-dum population that, that have animals who have caused this problem. I'm not saying, you know, I don't, I think at the end of this, we're not saying that the dog is 100% innocent because there's obviously cases that, you know, prove otherwise. Well, I mean, you're right. It's, it's, some dogs have issues. Yeah. Over in the UK. There are, there are any breed you want to look at. Any breed can have an issue. Over in the UK, the American Akita and the Japanese Akita are highly aggressive dogs out there. Yeah, they're the pit bull of, of, of Europe. Exactly. Um, I want to see a poodle go absolutely rampaged. <laughs> Watch me groom. <laughs> happens to me all the time. <laughs> I just want to see that little poofy standard poodle with you know that poofy cut, and I want to see that just go mauling like like Cujo. That would be I, funny. I had this one. Let's go make a movie. I had this one miniature poodle. The owner um, wanted a clean face on it, and she says my other my last groomer would never do a clean face on him. So, could you do it, please? Okay. That's weird. Uh, what kind of groomer doesn't do clean face on a poodle? And as I started going in um, on the face, it went berserk. <laughs> and now you oh, know why. my gosh. So I told the lady, I'm like, did your groomer ever tell you doesn't like the clean face, it tries to bite? No. Well, 
let me be the first to tell you, your dog is highly aggressive when it comes to the face. Um, I know it's not perfect. I know the lines aren't there. The dog's face is clean. But I will not be able to do this again. <laughs> and so I would much rather groom a pit bull type dog, a Nikita, Roddy, a Doberman, German Shepherd, much rather groom them than a pampered poodle or a pampered shih tzu or a pampered, pampered chihuahua. Yeah, pa oh boy. Oh, any you want to talk I, about I know. some of the most aggressive dogs in the world? I almost got tore up by a chihuahua once. I was sent to the hospital yeah. because of a darn chihuahua. I said I and would never... And I can never, say that because I got one. I would say... I, I used to say, folks, I would never own a chihuahua. That is just never going to happen. Oh, wait, I have one. Exactly. <laughs> so, but but look, at, look at this one. She's a purse for Claire. Claire carries her around like it's a teddy bear. Yeah. Um, a lot different of a chihuahua that I've ever seen. Now, the one thing that we're trying to break Belle of and Claire... Is that when it's feeding time for us? When it's time for us to eat, yeah. Belle gets highly um, protective of whoever's plate she's closest to. Yes. And Somebody when, made a recommendation that that was not the case. They were wrong, uh, yeah. and they were in the pet industry. Yeah. So I'm never gonna. I'm not gonna always be 100 percent right. No, it wasn't you. But other it was at a, at a show, and this person had a lot of experience with animals and said, "Oh, they're not trying to protect your food." Yeah. They were wrong. Yeah. They were one hundred percent wrong. So we have to teach Belle to stop it. When that happens, we get her off the couch, because once again, you should not let any dog have something that's its own. If anything, it's their bed or their actual crate. But even at a crate, but they also dogs know. get crate aggressive. Oh gosh! So the thing is, is that most of the time. You don't want your dog to have any possessions of its own. That's true. You don't want them to get a possession aggressiveness. Some dogs won't. Like I said, it's not all dogs. But our dogs, nothing in this house is theirs. Other than their food bowl. But even at that, we put our fingers in it. We have to pick it up. We have to feed them. Well, picking it up, I mean, they, they never have shown aggression to that. No, uh, I mean, there's times where I drop something in a bowl and I pick it up while they're eating. Oh, yeah. You know, it's... I I'll pet them. them. I'll pet them when they're eating, which a lot of people say, no, never pet it. I'll pet the dogs when they're eating. Oh, well, it, it shows that even their food isn't theirs. Yeah. They yeah. don't need to have to have possession of anything. It's not like a grown man who has screwed up his entire life wants to have one thing that's theirs... And wants to protect that one thing. No, it's not the same. Dogs don't have to have a possession. Yeah. And, and you know... The... But with Belle, the food thing, we make her get off the couch. Yep. Away from anywhere. Because, you know, our house isn't big enough for a dining room table. So we can only get a table. Would we ever? We've never done dining room tables. Last time I did a dining room table was when I was a kid. And I hated we, it. We all talk anyway. So we don't need to have... You know, sit down to where we talk. We I, you know? we have the most intimate meals I think you could possibly have. I'm oh, sorry. Dinner and a movie is the best. Dinner, so. movie, TV show. And we're, yeah. You know, we're always talking. We're always discussing <laughs> something. I, I, I'm I with how we so do things. we make Belle get off the couch. Yes. And then we make Claire go sit down somewhere else. Oh, yeah. Claire has her own table. Her yeah. own... She actually has a table. So which we, we sure, use to do the podcast. We make sure... <laughs> hey, Claire, Belle doesn't like it. Don't come up fast to us. Now, if you want to come sit next to us and Belle starts that, then Belle is the only one that gets in trouble for it. Right. Or, or corrected. Now, if Claire was being super hyper and she's done with her food already, which happens all the time, she comes running up to us and Belle starts barking. Claire, do not run up to us while we have food. Belle, off the couch. Yeah. Or not only really, it's Belle off the couch, Claire, don't It do really that. is a constant battle, even with kid. Kid and pet. Well, it's just something you got to do. Yeah. It's it's a responsibility you take on when you get the pet. When you say yes to that pet, yes, it's a responsibility you take on. And, and you so. know what? The same things applied to both cats. You know, both cats are uh, they had issues as well. It's it's a whole thing. Animal in general, you just you know that's a whole different story. Yeah, whole different yeah. story. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, you know, we, we, we've given a long episode, a lot longer than a lot of episodes. We, we've been kind of, we've, I would say we were a little lapsed 
on the last couple, so give well, them more. this one's a lot more passion. Yeah, um, and we both have a lot to talk about to it, so. Well, throughout our years, I mean, as much information I've gathered, how much information you've gathered, I am the type that I observe. My dad told me, <laughs> it's better to observe than speak out of turn and look like a fool. Yes. So, I sit, I observe. I watch, and I see patterns. I love patterns. Pattern, you know, patterns on a piece of paper, patterns on a computer, uh, patterns in a building. Behavioral patterns. Dog behavioral patterns. I love them all. Well, they're so easy to, to start looking at, and you can, almost, you can pick up everything off of, a, off of an animal. They're so dynamic in that area. I love it. So, um, by watching... As many pit bulls I've, you know, pit bull type dogs I've groomed at all my shops. Um, my la my last shop that I worked at, she said none, none are to open into the door. And I told her I was like, look, I am a self-employed groomer at the shop. That means I should be able to groom whatever I see fit, and for how many hours I see fit. Because I am paying you to have the spot. Wait, I, I, I'm self-employed too, so I don't have to go to work tomorrow? Ha ha. Ha ha. I guess that means I have to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> so I ended up being one of the only places that would groom, you know, pit bull type dogs. Most people just do it at their house. It's so simple. I, I just, I wash Roxy here. Yeah, you do Roxy here. I But still sometimes would, they need but... their nails trimmed and their ears cleaned out and people get freaked out with nail trimmers. So I, and ears do don't really bug me. That that's like the least of it all. It doesn't it's bother a me. It's nail trimming that bugs a lot of people. That that does have an I do have an issue with that. But you know, again, you know, to kind of take everything, bring it all together. Is it really bad owners or is it a bad dog? I think at the end of the day, you can say it's both. I at the end of the day, I say it's lack of knowledge. It's ignorance. It is, and most people. They don't know. They don't understand the word ignorant, and that is a huge spider. That was. Let I me think see Chris is going to go kill it. It was under the purple tire of the There it goes. There it was. Dang! That thing's like a size of a nickel. <laughs> Anywho. Well, you know, I myself, what, what, what an impactable uh, uh, podcast. You know, we're violent here. That was that um, was huge. That was a. Uh, that was one of the biggest. They even had goo come out of it. That was so big. That so, was really nasty. I, I, that was probably the nastiest spider I've ever seen. I think it's ignorance. I think it's people not knowing the breed. And then it's people who know the breed but don't know better. I think it's, it's then, also people who want to have that dog that's, that's, like I said, the badass dog that, you know, just makes them look tougher. Right. You know, I got this dog. It, it really is just almost that... that accessory you know some people like to have a gun rack and have a big gun on it and some people want a dog that just says i'm a badass yeah i mean it's 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 just it's it frustrates me the level of ignorance and the level of stupidity of people it really is it, well people destroy things they do people have just been destroying the earth people humans have been destroying relationships with each other. People don't know how to talk to each other anymore because of social media. Well, we were talking about that before. I mean, yeah. look Humans. at look at on a birthday. You used to receive a phone call. Then it became an email. Then, or you know. Then text. Then text. Then MySpace. And then Facebook. You and know. Twitter. Or Twitter. But, you know, it, it's it's so funny how, but, how we modernize, but we move up. But some things we just don't. Humans destroy other human life. Yep. Humans are known to destroy. And that's the problem. They are destroying these breeds. These pit bull type breeds. Oh, but, but there's not enough information out there. I don't know what to do. Where do I go and find it? I mean... Google? You can go to the library. Free internet. You can Well, go, if you're listening to this show, you have you've already internet. got internet. So... Please, folks, all those who have fear of, of pit bulls, yes, 
you you can have your fear. And you should. You, you should have, have to, caution. That's it. It's caution. Turn your fear into caution. Yes. Because every dog can smell fear. Every dog can sense fear. Yes. Okay. And it just antagonizes them. So turn your fear into being cautious. I see an Amstaff walking towards me. Of course, my first reaction is, Hi, baby! I want to say hi! Wiggle your butt for me! As it's foaming at its know? mouth, it looks like Cujo. She's like, <laughs> let me go and shake your hand! So, it, it's showing caution. Look at signs. If the dog's stiff, the tail is barely wagging back and forth, and the ears are pinned back and the hair is starting to come up, cautious, go around. Yep. Okay? Especially if you don't like them, just go around. Yep. You don't need to hate them. You don't need to fear them, <coughs> but use caution. And unfortunately, there are jerks out there who don't know how to properly take care of the, these breeds, and therefore they become dangerous. Yep. It's just like having a, a, a game banger or some kind of criminal with a gun in their hand. It's the same thing. You see a regular dude walking down the street with a gun on your hip, you're not going to think anything of it. I do. But if Every you time, see, I do. But if you see someone who is kind of sketchy with a gun on their hip, you kind of, whoa, wait a second. I think about it anytime. Well, I don't. I'd rather be in a room full of people with guns than... Well, that's <laughs> true. I'm not saying that. I'm just, I always think, whoa. When I see somebody with a gun, I still always think, whoa. And I don't care. I, 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 I if I see I a badge. I check them out. If I see a badge, I still go, whoa. But it's how you control it. Yes. It's how you control that dog. Yes. You know, I don't. If I see somebody walking down the street at night and Roxy's out there, she's getting growling, Roxy house. Well, actually, what we do is we tell her sit. Mm -hmm. Because we don't want her to actually feel like her protection is a actually bad a bad thing. If she's been told to sit, then she can still watch and be by our side, and she knows that she's protecting us. But the instant she goes against that sit and stands up, <laughs> Yeah, if she stands house. up, then there's definitely a, you're, you know, sit, lay down. When she won't do that, but... So just, just... Please don't fear the breed. Don't fear them. We need to fear the dum-dums. Yeah, stupidity. Yep. But. And and to follow up on dum-dum with the kin, the kin has been adopted by April. Again, thank you for what you did. Does she actually keep him? Uh, she does have him. I think she's keeping him for the moment. Um, and I do have to say thank you for putting this dum-dum on the no-adopt list. Yep. You know, that's one one more idiot that's going to have a little bit... She'll still find a way of getting an animal. Yeah. But, you know what? At least you're taking every precaution you can. So, alright folks. Well, we have run almost an hour and a half. And, um, well, we hope that this episode has helped out a little bit. Obviously, we haven't given you the which side we prefer more. Because we really don't prefer a side on this. Um... It's the dumb. I dumbs. prefer the side of education. I do too. I I do too, but we you know we we don't support the dog. We don't support the people. We support the education, because honestly, if you put them both together, it would help. So, anything you want to add? Um, no, I think we covered the bases without trying to uh, over say yeah. what we said. I mean, obviously, this this episode's already really long. <laughs> well, everybody. I want to, for the last time I get to say this on the radio, on the podcast today, happy birthday, honey. I love you so much. Thank you, and happy birthday to everybody who sent me um, happy birthday wishes. Um, I know a few of our listeners have. It means a lot to me. Thank you so much. My birthday has been one of those days I kind of just want to forget because it seemed like every time uh, my dad had to go to the emergency room was on my birthday. That is true. He's had two heart attacks on my birthday. Um, on two different birthdays, on two different years, yep. and I just kind of wanted to forget my birthday, but love, luckily, with all the amazing people out there, have really made this a really a joyous day. And, you know... That sounded very cheesy. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's always great to know that we have, you know, so many great people who listen to our show, whether they're from the West Coast, local, East Coast, or around the world. It's a lot of fun to be able to do this show, knowing that you guys all enjoy it. So, with that said, have a petastic week. I'm Chris Green. I'll be back next week. Oh, you didn't, and you're 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 way the same. Sorry, I'm Sarah Green. 
remember everybody, life is short. Play with your pet. Have a good week, everybody. Okay, guys, it's my bedtime. <laughs>